What's going on? What was the change? Concentration of the dog. Of what? All three. All three? Everything went up. Were the changes immediate or gradual? Uh, two of them were gradual. One was bang, bang, boozle. Bang, bang, boozle. Yeah, one shot right up. One shot right up, and then what happened to it? The other. What happened to the one that shot up? That means they added. Yeah, they added. They added more concentration to that one, and then like they leveled out because like, the other ones like went up to get the equal. Yeah, so you added this into the system because it was already there, but you put some more in. It gradually decreased and leveled off, and these gradually increased. See if you can write me the chemical equation for this reaction. Right there on the page. Oh, now what's going on? Somebody have control of my computer. The librarian. You didn't bring them some stuff from last year. She's actually done that before. She's actually like taking control. Oh, right? The other two slowly increase. So write a chemical equation for this. Does it really matter? You can reach equilibrium from either end of your reaction. This second way is probably the reaction. Okay, because what would you do? Would you want to decompose ammonia into hydrogen and nitrogen gases, or would you want to make ammonia, being that that's one of the most produced chemicals in the world? You'd want to make ammonia. But equilibrium can be reached from either directions. I can put in this. More of this will form. This will decrease. Equilibrium will reestablish. I have this, add this, this will be produced, this will decrease, equilibrium will be reestablished. It doesn't matter if you add these or add that, it will balance itself out so that everything is steady state. So I can add a product or a reactant, eventually it will reach equilibrium. It doesn't matter what I started with whether I started with hydrogen and nitrogen only, or if I just started with ammonia. Do you get it? What? There's people screaming. There's people screaming. principle. So basically, what this principle says is that if you make a change to any system, the system will shift to oppose the change. So that's the key point to this unit, to what is going on. Whatever change is made to the system, the system will shift and adjust to oppose the change and reestablish equilibrium again. So in this case, we added ammonia. Look at the graph. What happened when you added ammonia? What happened to the ammonia? It went, up. it went up and then it got used up. The system used up. It opposed the change. You added it. It said, get rid of it. And in doing so, it increased the amounts of nitrogen and hydrogen. What would have happened, do you think, if I added hydrogen? Yeah. It would make more of this to use this up. If I added more of this, it would shift this way to use it up. What happens if I took out all my nitrogen gas? I took it all out. What would happen if I took it out? This is, what's the opposite of removing? Making. So how does this system make nitrogen gas? Yeah, it decomposes the ammonia to replace it. 
The system reacts. We don't do anything to it. We take this out, we're done. The system will say, okay, I've got to replace that. So this will break down. You have a shift in this direction. It will replace that. And as a side point, this will also increase. If I take this out, the system says, oh, there's no hydrogen. It's going to shift in this direction to make more of this. So now, a little bit more of that's made, and that decreases. So if I am making ammonia, and all of a sudden, everything stops. I'm not making any more. These aren't getting used anymore. If I siphon off my ammonia, I've got my product, and what does the system want to do? If I remove my ammonia as it's getting made, what is the system going to want to do? Make more. Make more. So it's going to shift to the right, because that's where the hole is. It's going to shift to the right to replace it. So I'm using this up and I'm making more product. We're forcing it. We're forcing a reaction to make more product. And this is what you have to do if you've got a system that wants to stop. You make it keep going. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And this is what chemical engineers are doing, right? They're keeping track of concentrations, keeping track of pressures, temperatures, and how to manipulate those factors to maximize their yield. So this is the premise of Le Chatelier's principle. The system itself will shift to oppose the change that you do to it. Okay, so we've looked at changes in concentration already, right? You remove it, the system will shift to replace it. And this is where that left and right happens. If I take something away that's on the right-hand side, the system wants to replace it, so the shift is towards the right. We want to make more of it, so we use up reactants. If I remove H2, the system is going to shift left to replace it. So there will be less products, more reactants. What happens if I add H2? Which way will the system move in order to oppose the change if I add H2? Kyle? It's going to shift to the right because it wants to use it up by making more ammonia. You kind of getting a handle on the lingo? Shift left, shift right? Okay. All right. Number two, changes in pressure and volume. All right. So, if we... Decrease the volume of the container, and you've got a gas, you're increasing the pressure. Pressure is a measure of the collisions that the molecules have with the walls of your container. So if there's less space for them to be in, the pressure is going to go up. So if you decrease the volume, the pressure will increase. If you make the volume bigger, there's more space for the molecules to be. They won't be hitting the walls of the container. The pressure will decrease. So it's like an inverse relationship. What happens to the volume? The opposite happens to the pressure. But it's the pressure that we look at in the equation. So if we look at the same reaction... What state is everything in here? Hydrogen? Gas. Gas. Nitrogen? Gas. And ammonia, when you make it, it's a gas. So everything in here is related to pressure. 
What is the coefficient in front of hydrogen? Three. What is the coefficient in front of nitrogen? What is the coefficient in front of ammonia? You use these coefficients to figure out which side has the high pressure, which side has the low pressure to start with. Two is smaller than four. So the right side has low pressure. The right side, sorry, the left side has high pressure. The more particles you have, the more collisions you're going to have with the wall of a container. Somebody is messing with my computer. Okay. So, if I have a container and I'm making my product, it's an equilibrium, and then I shrink the container. What happens to my pressure? <coughs> it increases. So if I increase the pressure of the system, what does the system want to do? It can't control the container. So if a system opposes the change and I increase the pressure, what does the system want to do? Decrease the pressure. Just we're talking pressure. That's it. So if I increase the pressure, the system will shift to decrease the pressure. Which side will have lower pressure? So if I shrink the container, I increase the pressure, the system will all automatically shift to the right because it has the side with the lower pressure. It opposes the change. If I increase the volume of my chamber, of my vessel, if I increase the volume, my pressure will decrease. What will the system do? If I decrease the pressure, it wants to? It's the opposite of decrease. Increase. So it will shift to the side with a higher pressure. So it will shift to the left. Mr. Simon did not know that. <laughs>
If I'm removing it, it wants to add it or replace it. So if I take it out on this side, which way is it going to shift? No. Left. So the side you take it from? It won't replace it that side. It's going to want to replace it. If I add heat, if I increase the temperature of the system, I'm adding energy, and in this case, it's a reactant. Which way will the system shift? It's going to shift to the right to use it up. Doesn't matter if your system is exothermic or endothermic, it will work in the same way. If you're cooling it down, it's removing it, you've got to replace it. So, <coughs> uh, the next reaction has H2 plus Cl2 going to 2HCl in energy. So if I cool the system down, if I reduce the temperature, I'm effectively removing energy. The system will shift to the right to replace it. No. I have to blow my nose.